Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. I've decided to do a part two to my original video lift off oversteer in Automobilista 2 and uh, a link to that should be coming up in the video now. If not, I'll put a link to it in the video description. I've decided to do a part two because I've had so many comments from you all. Um, and because in that example, I was trying to give a really extreme example of the amount of oversteer or lift off oversteer that is available in Automobilista Ballista 2 by Reza Studios if you want it. Um, but in the, the, that example, I was trying to give you an idea of there's so much oversteer, it's catastrophic. And I, all of, a lot of you have said in the comments that's not lift off oversteer, lift off oversteer should be used much more subtly than that. You're just throwing a car into a corner. You're all absolutely right. That's exactly what I was doing. I was throwing the car into the corner. Uh, and the point being just to show how much lift off oversteer there was because without that extreme setup, the car just wouldn't have done that. If it was a, a, a setup that was geared for no lift off oversteer, you wouldn't have had that. Not only that, it's also really hard to show subtle lift off oversteer in a video example, which, uh, which is why I was trying to give you such an over the top really obvious visual example but I totally understand what you're saying you want a more subtle example so I've attempted to give you that so in this video I'm going to be taking the car round Montreal corner at Snetterton um, at exactly the same speed with exactly the same setup just changing one setting and the setting that I'm going to be using uh, in the main example is the difference between having the differential set up with uh, coast on full lock and coast um, uh, com uh, as open as possible. That's just one of the things that I did in the original video to, to, to create the oversteer. Obviously you can create it with having more things like more rebounds on the rear dampers. You can, you can change the camber angles and tire pressures to get more or less lift off oversteer. But this is just to show a subtle example of how you can get the car to have uh, with your lift off oversteer have a much tighter radius of a turn and Montreal corner at Setterton is a good way to show it. So there's a couple of video clips coming up now to show you this. I hope it I hope it sort of gives gives you a little bit more of a subtle impression. And also I did have a comment saying that um, uh, someone thought that this was a direct response to one of Game of Muscles videos. This is not a response to Game of Muscles videos. This is a response to several YouTubers that I've seen make a video on this. It's a response to what's being said on the Facebook group um, for Reza Studios, uh, forums over at Race Department and the Reza forums themselves. And my point is, I mean, uh, Game of Muscle, I know, I know what his opinions are, uh, but I, I, I love Game of Muscle. Uh, I, go, I was on his stream, not yesterday, but the day before. And I, I had a complete disagreement with him over view settings, and he told me I was 100% wrong. I told him he was 100% wrong in the comments, laugh out loud. Because that's what you can do with him. You, 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 you can have a bit of banter. That's why his streams are so much fun. And you get to have a good race, because he sets up servers, and, and off you go. But I agree with some of the stuff that he says, um, and some of the stuff a lot of other people are saying about uh, the liftoff oversteer in... Automobilista 2, it's not the same as in, say, R Factor or ACC. It's in R Factor or ACC, you come off that throttle and the car turns in immediately. It's, it's very on off. In Automobilista 2, it's, it, it's kind of a little bit delayed. You come off the throttle, the diff slows down, gradually opens up, and then the car's like, oh, that's what you meant, and then gradually starts. It's a little bit delayed, but it, the point, the whole point of the video is that it's there for you to use if you can find it. So, I hope this I hope this explains something for you. Here's a couple of clips. Okay, so here is a much more subtle demonstration of the lift off oversteer at work in Automobilista 2. I say more subtle. I've made a setup here. You'll see we're on diff open coast. This setup is much much closer. It's, it's much closer to the default setup. Most of the settings are the same. Um, now the reason it's called diff open coast. One of the ways you can get the lift off oversteer really working is using your differential. Um, now the differential in Automobilista 2 uh, has more settings available to it in this car than are available in say ACC or R Factor where you literally only have your preload so you can open the diff or close it um, 
the lock that's already built into the diff before any inputs are in. Um, but with Ultima Ballista 2, you've also got the amount of clutches that are available. Each time you double the clutches, it doubles the locking effect. And you can control the locking effect under power and coast. You've also got a viscous lock, which uses the fluid inside the diff. We're leaving that alone for the moment. So we're just using these settings. Now, as you can see, this is quite important here. There's four clutches going on and there's 60 newton meters of torque. I need some preload in there to make sure that the transition between on off throttle isn't too violent. Um, so, or, or, or too quick. So having that at 60 is just about right. Now we've got our power locked up as much as possible. The lower the number here, i.e. 25, that's as low as it'll go. That's, that's brings the lock, that's, that locks the two wheels together uh, much more intensely. Um, and then we've got that on coast as well. And you can open that up to 89, which lets the wheels move more freely. But this is with the coast ramp at 25. So it's as locked up as possible. And for this test, to show you this, we're just gonna use one corner, which is Montreal corner. Here at Snetterton, we've got our traction control and ABS off. And what I'm gonna do is approach the corner at 70 miles an hour exactly and try and get around the corner. So it's really hard to keep this car at exactly 70, especially with a digital dash. But we might be a mile or an hour or two either side off, but it should be about 70. And I'm lifting off and turning in. And we're on the grass. Okay, and that was, you know, turning in pretty much immediately and as hard as I can. So let's just go back to the pit box. I'll show you that one more time so you, you can see that I'm, it's, it's not my driving doing this. You can see my throttle input down there. So you can see when I'm lifting off. You can see my steering inputs on the screen and through the webcam. So 70 miles an hour we want. Approaching from the same position. There we go, 70. Turning in and lifting off at the same time, at the same point. And we're right to the outside of the, the corner again, right on the curb. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our setup and we're going to open that coast ramp all the way up. Just the coast ramp, nothing else. So now under lift off, those wheels at the back will move more independently. And hopefully we should see the effect that that has on the lift off oversteer while taking Montreal corner. So try and get it down to 70. Eight, 69, 70, just stay there, stay there, 69, 70, okay, and turning in, and there you go, it's turned, it turned in, and also out of the corner, without getting anywhere near the curb that time, so let's just do that again, just to show you that it's, it's not anything I'm doing with my driving, this is literally the effect of opening up that coast ramp with a little bit of preload, you know, well, 16 8 meters of preload built in to make that transition not too violent. So 70, come on. So hard to keep it at 70, exactly. 69, 69 will do. And we're turning in. Round we go. There you go. So the, the, the radius of the car turning in there is much tighter. Okay, so I'll just give you a, a, a couple more examples. I'll just do these, this once each time. I'm going to go, and it'll be so easy to see because I'm going to use the extreme setups that I've made. So let's go to, let's go to a setup which is designed to understeer that the car is set up to understand in general, oh, just hit the wall there, in general, um, 
whether under coast or not. Um, but it, 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 it's set up for for pretty much no lift off oversteer. And like I said, this is the extreme example. So this is ridiculous. You'd never race with this setup at all. Let's get to 70. 70, 70, 69, 68, 69. Ah! <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we've, we've not made the corner at all. So if we go back to the extreme setup that I was using in the first video. Where are we? Load. Uh, Lou 2. I love it. Setup Lou. Um, lift off oversteer. So this is the setup I was using in the first video, which is ridiculous. So this is what happens when the diff, the suspension, anti-roll, everything is set up, all geared towards lift off oversteer and a catastrophic amount of it. Try and keep that at seventy. At 70, there we go, that's nice. There we go. We've turned in so tightly there that the the car has just literally ended up facing the wrong direction. Let's see if I can try and get round that corner at 70 with that setup at all. I'm gonna turn in a lot. I'm gonna come off the throttle. I'm not gonna lift straight off, I'm gonna come off more gradually which is probably not going to work because we're at 70, which is a little bit too fast for the corner anyway. So we're probably going to end up overshooting it. Something's going to go wrong. But this setup is ridiculous. Again, like the stupid oversteer, understeer setup, you'd never race with this. It's just an extreme example. So here we are. Yeah, there you go. So that's a more subtle example right so obviously in the first video the example of the liftoff oversteer was absolutely extreme and i was throwing the car into the corner um and it was just to show you what would happen with an extreme set because if i it, lift off oversteer you know you can use it subtly if you choose to not use it subtly as i did um, in the first video then it will have a catastrophic effect so if I go and take that that's that's the setup I was on totally set up for liftoff oversteer in the last test I was approaching the corner at about 130 miles now let's do that again and this time I'm not gonna throw the car into the corner I'm just gonna turn in okay so There we go, and we've just made the corner, because I was going a little bit too fast, but we've just made it. Um, and that's with a subtle amount of turning, okay? Um, so now, if I go for, sorry to go back to um, extreme setups here, but let's, let's load an extreme setup, which is set up for no lift off oversteer whatsoever and a very understeery car in general we'll do the same thing again coming from the same angle hit it about we're doing about 130 and in we go and there you go i've not violently turned in there i've just turned in normally and we've ended up way outside on the grass um, I hope this is, is showing you a, a slightly more subtle idea of things. Um, and with that, with that uh, ridiculous understeer setup, if I was to do it exactly as I was in the video where I was, you know, just literally throwing it into the corner, the effect should be. There we go. There you go, and we've hit the fence. So, you know, I've lifted off, and it's just it's just wanted to go mainly straight on, 
with obviously the extreme oversteer setup because it's 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 geared, geared to oversteer as soon as you lift off and just an oversteery setup in general where is it now uh Lou 2 so now if if I you know go and absolutely chuck out the corner we're going to end up in a spin as soon as I lift off so There you go, because the car's willing to to, to to turn in quicker. But there you go, that's given you a more, that example around Montreal corner there should have given you a much more usable uh, subtle lift-off oversteer example. Uh, another thing I could do is, is take it around one of the longer corners at Spa and lift off, come back on the throttle and it will turn in. Uh, it just wouldn't show you it as well as that example at Montreal because it's just the right speed for the car to either be on the road or on the curb or on the grass. Um, so, yeah, I hope that's sort of cleared something. And that's just one of the things that you can do for the lifter, Ch changing that diff setting. Uh, that coast setting is definitely working, but it's, you know, I understand what people are saying because uh, about it seemingly not doing that or, or seemingly having no lift off over here because the the change is so much more it's a little bit more delayed than it is in R factor 2 or a set of course of composition you know you try the same thing in a set of course of composition and you you lower that because all you've got is your preload in fact actually if we go to the default setup And we've got our preload, let's take off the viscous locking. We've got our preload at 100. Okay. We'll just go and try that corner. At 70 again, I'll stay as close to 70 as my right foot will allow me. that will do and we'll turn in okay so that's that's with the preload at 100 and now let's be ridiculous and take it to zero Slight undulations in the track surface that make it hard to keep it at 70. So there we pull in. There we go. We're, we're actually coming coming around on the inside of the corner there. So uh, that's a bit more comparable to say something like ACC or R Factor 2, where you've only got that preload to adjust. So we've taken the preload right down and the car's turned in at a much tighter radius. So, um, well, I hope I hope that sort of explains my point a little bit better. That you know the liftoff oversteer isn't perfect, but it is there if you want to find it. You, but you've there's no um, magic trick to the diff settings. You know, if you because uh, obviously in the extreme settings I was using uh, things like uh, lots of rebound on the rear dampers. To induce the liftoff oversteer, the liftoff oversteer can be induced by just the way you set up the suspension, as well as things like the diff. But in this, the diff settings are complicated. If this is too high, so if this is something ridiculous as high as it will go, these will still make a difference, but it's less because there's so much more locking already built into the diff. If this is too low, these will still make a difference but less because there's no locking at all already built in uh, and it can make the transition too violent you have to find a happy medium so for this example 60 was about right 
because if I'd have tried uh, the settings that I had, which was the power ramp all the way up, so locked as I had it in both examples, but the diff setting all the way open, and then I took the preload completely off, it becomes, it's just too extreme. It's, so for example, I'll do the same test. And now I'm gonna have loads of lift off oversteer around Montreal, but it's gonna be unusable. It's gonna be probably pretty catastrophic. So 70, 70, 70, there we are. 69, 68, 69, 70, 69. And turning in, uh, and I'm not exactly throwing it, I've just turned in, and there you go, with the, the rear end of the cars coming around. Even if I counter steered there, I may not have caught it. Anyway, there you go. So I hope that's been of some use to anyone who's struggling to find some of the seemingly elusive lift-off oversteer available in Automobilista 2. Um, that's been the whole point of this video. And uh, don't just take my word for it, go and try it yourselves. Also, uh, go and look at other people's videos who have different views. Um, and, you know, like I said, uh, there's been lots of YouTubers, people on forums who have spoken about this, and YouTube, I've seen Ermin, Muscle, Broadbent, Will from Boosted Media, and uh, Steelcast27 all have an opinion on how this works. There's all valid points there. Um, so, like I said, don't just take my word for it um, and you know with these conflicting views and sometimes disagreements sometimes you actually discover things through disagreements and usually end up finding some kind of agreement so it's okay to disagree me and Peter like you should get us on some subjects we will we'll, we'll be shouting at each other for an hour you know I still love the old bugger don't I mate so yeah um, but the whole point of this was just to just to show you how to find it if you want. The way it's implemented in Ultimate Ballista 2 is different to how it is in R Factor 2 or in ACC. Um, it's it, it and it feels different as well because of the way things come through the steering as well. Um, each one of them seems to have their own sort of special source in the force feedback um, and the way the physics are as well. But um, this, you know. This is just to show you that it's there if you want to find it. I hope it's helped. Um, by the way, if you are liking my videos and if you are, um, or if you're disagreeing, um, come into the comments, tell me. Um, and uh, but if you like, if you're liking the videos, you want to see more, you want to help the channel out because I can do so much more with this channel. Um, I just need subscribers. So you know, if you want to consider hitting that subscribe button. Yeah, that would be lovely. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, it, like I said, if you come and come and chat to me in the comments, I think someone even said, um, uh, "What about doing a video on whether the grass is more slippery in Ultimate Blister Two compared to other Sims?" So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do some off-roading. I don't know. Give me some suggestions. And uh, in the meantime, happy sim racing. <laughs>